Thank you for coming this afternoon and to um, listen to the voice of the students and what they have to share on the violence that's taking place in St. Lucia at this time. I just want to share, before we begin, our own perspective as, as a school and I also represent the Sisters of St. Joseph of Clooney, managers of the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School. I begin with the quote, John 10, verse 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus' mission given him by the Father is to bring life in abundance to all humanity. This too is our mission at St. Joseph's Convent, to bring life, to support all efforts to promote, to promote life in every form and at every level of existence. Thus, we stand in opposition to the elimination of life in whatever way. Positively, it means that we promote a climate of life, an atmosphere which upholds everything that is life-giving. The best and indeed the only way to do this is to work towards a civilization of love firmly rooted in the gospel message, which is a gift of grace to each one of us. For God truly, passionately loves us, you and me, and we all have the right and freedom to live life to its fullest according to God's will. It is important for us to socialize our children in a manner that promotes tolerance, boldness to stand up against what is wrong and to speak the truth. Tomorrow's march is a demonstration of our intolerance towards that culture of death that is pervading the St. Lucian society. We are saying to each other and to the wider society to stand up and take responsibility, speak out, whether or not you are a lone voice. These students have my support, and I pray that this is just the beginning, that this initiative will spark the fire within them to not only march, but to act and live lives that reflect love. And I will ask them now to introduce themselves and the positions that they hold at the school. Padita Francis, Head Prefect. Pavlian Hippolyte, Deputy Head Prefect. Princess Joseph, Student Leader and Treasurer on the Students Council at the school. Bernita Shibnok, Student Leader and President of the Students Council at St. Joseph's Convent. I will now invite Beverly, Deputy Head Girl, to make some remarks. Okay, good afternoon everyone. And on behalf of the students and the staff of St. Joseph's Convent, thank you for coming here this afternoon. My name is Beverly Ann Hippolyte and I am the Deputy Head Girl here at SJC. We are all aware of the tragic death of Cherise Benoit on Thursday, 12th September 2013. Cherise was a remarkable student here at SJC, highly respected and admired by many. She was very involved in school life, holding the post of St. Teresa's House Captain. She also held the prestigious role of rank prefect. Her tragic death has troubled the hearts of many and left an everlasting sorrow for our fallen sister. For too long we have kept quiet against the ills that occur against us and sat back and said nothing against these ills that plague society. In these troubled times, it is mandatory that we go against the status quo and stand up for all those who have fallen by acts of criminal injustice. As young women in society, we want to take a stance against crime and violence against women. We are of the firm belief that this should be stopped. As a result, we as a school are demonstrating this through a silent march on Wednesday 18th September 2013 from 11.15 a.m. Actions speak louder than words, and we hope that in our silence, our voices will be heard at maximum volume. Thank you. From the time the march begins, we leave the school with our placards, our symbols of purple, 
and along with a candle we will march down from the school and we will go on to Cedars Road, then to the Chaussee, on to Jeremy Street, Brazil Street and around the square and into the cathedral where we have a short ceremony of prayer and after that we come back up to the school. So basically it's a silent march so we won't be speaking but we hope that with our silence the public hears the voice, hears our cries and opens up and listens to us. The participation is overwhelming. Um, the students have re responded very well with the purple, wearing of the purple ribbons today. The teachers all have their purple ribbons and are very much involved because um, is Sharice is home for us. Sharice is a student of this, a past student of this school, and it is it's painful. And everybody has come on board, and we really want to sensitize people. We want to create that consciousness. So we have the full support of staff and students. I will allow them to speak for themselves, but what we noticed at um, those of crying, um, I think they were upset too. It was, it's painful, it's hurtful because you're looking at youth affecting youth and it's a concern for them. But I will like that, allow them to share their own experiences. Naturally, in these times, you would feel a bit insecure because you figure the police haven't discovered who the actual committer of the crime is as yet and that person might still be looking around and there is always that that feeling in society that women are more vulnerable to such crimes than men are and being girls only in this school being an all girls school we would tend to feel that sense of insecurity but i think mostly it's is the pain that we're feeling because a lot of us could have associated with her who she was as a person as a student of the school during her stint here and there is also a bit of anger list between it because for such a person to for a person to commit such a crime that that is very heinous. It speaks wonders of that person's character. And we're just looking to see justice right now. Because we understand the fact that she has been killed however brutally it was done. And right now we just want justice for whoever committed this crime. What we try to do at the school, I think the first thing we address is bullying so that people can be tolerant of each other. I think this is very important that we try to encourage students, we speak to them, we have lectures, we, we use videos, DVDs, whatever we can, and it's a reminder at our assemblies every morning. And if you look around the school, you'll notice a number of motivational um, quotes around the school itself. We're trying to get students to find themselves, to be able to appreciate themselves and to appreciate the other person and to respect the other person. Because you have students coming in from different backgrounds, different walks of life. And right now, we, sometimes a child could be jealous of another child for no reason at all, because they feel less, lesser than. And we try to teach them to accept what you have, to be satisfied with what you have to be able to 
accept that other person for who she is and to know that this person, her parents can give her whatever she can give her, that's fine. The other person, their parent may not be able to give them and you settle for what you have because we feel a lot of these crimes are what the, the young people would term as haters and we try to discourage that at the school. Okay, what, I, what would I like to say to our, our women, um, it does not just begin with you as a grown woman. It, it, I think it starts off with how we socialize people, socialize both our men and our women. And in this time, I think we have to be aware of, of our surroundings. You walk around, sometimes you, we are not immune. We are just not immune. The, um, you, you cannot judge anybody. Sometimes you may, the persons you may think are the ones that, you, that you're safe with are the ones sometimes that you're, that's where the danger is. So I think uh, more so that you, people, our um, women need to talk about what is going on in their life, find somebody to talk about what's going on in your life, you know, that to share your friends, that you, you're going out, you know, who is with you, how you're getting back home. A lot of our young people now are going out and they have no way of getting back home. They, they just leave it to chance that when they get to this party that they will get a ride. And I think this is very dangerous. So I think to even the drinking problem that we have to pay attention to, the drugs, the way people use drugs, um, that they should, all, they should be able to be conscious of their surroundings, conscious of themselves anywhere they go. And um, I think right now with the fear, we have to be able to counsel people, let people know that you have a right and that freedom to live. This land is ours and we have to bring it back. And I think it's everybody's responsibility to look out for each other. We have, uh, we have lost that community spirit. We have lost it and we have to bring it back. what we have done is allowed ourselves to get complacent and we have not identified with the crimes that have happened and we think that because it has not hit home has not hit close to us that it does not affect us now in terms of what the country is doing i think the youth are not putting enough emphasis on the crimes that are being done the crimes that are being committed and i think the rest of the youth need to join the St. Joseph's Convention in what we are doing crying out for the injustice that plagues our society and crying out for measures that need to be placed to ensure that these matters are dealt with before they occur. Personally, the crimes that have plagued television and the crimes that have plagued the radio over the past how many years have made us feel fearful as a people. And I think that does not just apply to youth, it applies to the entire nation. As a person, I think that there are a lot of social ills that are leading to these crimes. But in terms of what we can do as one body, and as a youth body, as youth in our country, looking to be the future, looking to be the ones who head St. Lucia in the next decade, we need to ensure that this fear needs to be removed from our society. Measures need to be taken by youth bodies and by other bodies in our societies to ensure that there is the fear is removed from society and that we feel that pride, we feel that community spirit, and we feel 
safe in the nation that we live in. Um, personally, I would say that I do feel a sense of security, but it's limited to only a certain extent. I mean, the people I associate with, from what I've gathered about them over the years, and even at school, they don't seem to be a harm to me, like personally. So I would say that in the environment which I interact in, with the people I interact, I do find that there is security to a certain sense, in a certain sense. But there is always that feeling of not being safe when you're out in the public. Because being at home with friends and family members who you trust and feel secure with is one thing. But when you get out to the streets in St. Lucia, that's a whole other ball game. Because there are many strangers on the road, there are people who you do not know, and you are never sure who a threat to you could be, who a threat could be to you. And in that sense, I would say that there is a bit of uneasiness when walking through the streets of, the streets of Castries especially. Um, as, as a young person and experiencing these different ills that plague our society, I must admit that a bit of fear has been instilled in me more than, than, than it was. I, I was fearful because different things happen every day and whereas the environment I am in does not threaten my life but we are not in control of our lives I should say and it is always good to be aware of where you are and who is around you and I think as young people if we speak out and show that we are not going to stand for what is happening in our society because we are the future, we are the ones who are going to be leaders, we are the ones who are going to be teachers, we are the ones who are going to be making our children and bringing them into this society. And I think that it is, is, it is mandatory that we create a safe environment for each other and for those coming up behind us. As a young woman, I must say that I, I don't feel safe because I believe that we as young women are being targeted because of our vulnerability because of our gender relations. So I believe that so much can be done, but so much is not being done. So it leaves me with that fear that should I do this, should I do that? So I will say that I am a little bit fearful because of such crimes that have clouded our society. We will end at the cathedral at approximately maybe 12.30 with a prayer service and it's important um, with prayer, prayer is what's going to help us. So nice, we, 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 um, we move away from God, we move away from the prayer life, but that is part of our life here at SJC and we want to include it in the march. That's how we're going to end with the prayer service and we are... We're not just praying for Sherry's, but we're praying for the families that are left behind after these murders because um, there's a lot of hurt, there's a lot of pain, and it's not going to be easy to forgive. So we are praying for the family that, that the mother can stand up to face another tomorrow because her pain is deep, her pain is great. And we pray the same way for all other families. And tomorrow we really want to lift up our country and our young people in prayer. So those who cannot attend the march, we ask you to join us at the cathedral for 12.30.